Alright, Shalom, another GMS on the go back with another lesson. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Hey, next double honors to the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the ones that taught us the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere accurate men pushing this Bible, regardless of people here for a bear, to the best of your ability. Keep pushing. Just a quick lesson through the spirit of your head by Shemel Shai. But the men of the Lord are set up to warn you. Not to play a, not to play around with you, not to play games with you. You know what I'm saying? Not to two-step with you or none of that nonsense, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has sent forth his service to warn you, man. To warn you Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians of the pending destruction that's gonna come. That's our only job, man. Okay? Our job is not is not to make friends with you. You know what I'm saying? Not to come over to your house and eat cupcakes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Turkey burgers and all that other nonsense. Not to come to your cookouts and all that. Our only job is to warn you from the God of the Bible, man. And I'm going to hop right into it. This is a short lesson through the Spirit. I was watching the brother, the elder, you know what I'm saying? Now elder, you know what I'm saying? Of GMS South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Manata Zagba. Hey, and then his lesson, you know what I'm saying? Made me want to do a lesson through the Spirit of Yahweh by Shemel Rashad, you know? It inspired me. He's going into a video on um, one and Jake. So I got some scriptures that I want to bring out through the spirit of Yahweh by Shemel Rashad. We warn our people with the words of Yahweh by Shemel Rashad, and then they despise it, man. They hate the words. Well, like the, like the elder was going into, the God of the Bible got the concentration camps ready for you, Jake's. You two thirds, they don't want to take heed to this word. The concentration camps are already ready, man. Okay? Only thing the concentration camp need is you in it, man. Okay? That famine coming, that race riot is coming. And this is way before, you know what I'm saying, the ICBM missiles and the chariots pop up, man. You Jake's got hell to pay, man, for despising the words of the Bible, man. Read knowing, though. Let me, let me hop right into it. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Oh, y'all sound like a broken record. What the hell what y'all saying? Let the broken record spin there, man. You're going to wish you would have took heed to that lesson, though. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Why do you think we always, like right about now, I got the news on. I know um, people come to my house, you know what I'm saying, not um, men in the truth, but like certain um, females I might invite over or whatever. The first thing they say is, every time I come over to your house, you got the news on. Why, why is that? Oh, I just like to watch the news. You got to be wise. We watch the news because why? We watchmen, man, okay? So what did he say again? What did the Most High say again? Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. We warning you from the God of the Bible, man, that a famine is coming. The cannibalism is coming, man. You know? You think they, they wilding out down there in Venezuela right about now, man. You ain't seen nothing, man. Or down there in Brazil, you ain't seen nothing yet, man. He's going he gonna to say the best for last, man. America, the God of the Bible is saving the best for last, man. America's going to really get it, man. All kind of plagues are going to come here, man. Okay? And look, and there's going to be a famine of the word. So our people ain't going to have no answers, man, to all of their questions. See, the, the best time to ask questions is now because you can get the answers. We're here giving our people the answers according to the Bible, but they ask no questions, man. They don't want to know nothing until all hell break loose. So we wanting our people from the God of the Bible. Look, regardless if they're here for a bad. So I'm going to jump over a chapter. I'm going to jump over, um, yeah, I'm going to jump over a chapter. Ezekiel chapter 2, I'm going um, to go straight to the point. Verse 3, and he said unto me, son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, which consists of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's who you are, man. And we're giving you warning, man. We ain't telling you, look, look, man, look, let me get this right quick. Because these false pastors, these false camps, these false leaders, they're telling you that it's party time, man. This is not party time, man. This is not the time to be partying. This is um, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. So it's better to, and this is the house of mourning. What you see right now, you know what I'm saying? This is the house of mourning. Those fake camps, like I named some of them, the IUIC, the Israel United in Christ, which that's not even the name of our Lord and Savior, man. His name is not Christ, man. His name is not Jesus Christ, all right? It's Yahweh Shai, Lord Yahweh Shai, man, okay? 
That's what camp, you know what I'm saying, is feasting right about now. When the scriptures tell us to go to the house on morning, all right? We need our Savior to come back, man. We need saving out of this hellhole called America, man. This pit, man, okay? So why is everybody partying they in the Christmas spirit right about now? They're already getting ready for new so-called New Year's Eve right about now. They spent all their damn money. Jake is in heavy debt. But the only thing they think about is partying and feasting it up, man. What did the scripture say again? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men. All that partying, hip hip hooray, and all that other nonsense. That's what's going to get you caught up, man. That's what's going to get you caught up, right? All that feasting, all that partying, not taking heed or not even paying attention to what's really going on, man. You got all hell breaking loose. And the only thing you Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, all you're thinking about is partying, man. Really? Really? For that is the end of all men. And the living will lead to heart. And once you come back to the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures, hey, you begin to you begin to live again, man. Okay? You begin to live again. Let's get that right quick. This is on St. John chapter 6. St. John chapter 6, verse 63. Red letter. This is the Lord speaking. Lord Yahweh, right? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And the word quickening means to make alive, man. Okay? So once you hear this word and you come back to your nationality, you have been made alive again, man. Once you come back to your how about Shimei, I was shy, not God and Christ blessed. That's when you truly begin to live again, okay? Because what? The word quickening, man. The word is the spirit, man. Okay? So let's go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3 again. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation, that have, that have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Because you are your forefathers coming back. There's a such thing called reincarnation, right? You come back in the flesh every third or fourth generation, man. And if you don't believe that, we ain't trying to make you believe it, all right? We're just giving you the word. It says, um, um, yeah, even until this day, 2018, going on 2019, you got the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the majority of our people, they hate the Lord, man. They hate the only begotten son. They hate the men that the Lord set up to teach them the truth, right? And to give them warning, right? It says, uh, verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 4. Salakia. For they are impudent. Meaning hard-headed, retarded, right? For they are impudent children. And stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And that's what we tell our people. Even though we know they stiff headed and hard headed and they ain't going to listen to the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, we still go out there to the highways and byways week in and week out, starting off with our head apostles, man. It never ends, man. You know? It never ends, man. The God of the Bible said, yeah, they ain't going to listen to you because guess why? They didn't listen to me. But I still want you to go out there and warn them. So when I bring death and destruction to this place called America and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, they ain't going to have no excuses. You Israelites, y'all gonna have no excuses, man, for not taking heed, man. It says, um, verse 5, And they, whether they were here or whether they were forbear. So regardless if they hear, hear or don't take heed to the words of the Lord, we're still commanded to go out there and teach and warn them, right? It says, um, for they are a rebellious house. They constantly stay fighting against the God of the Bible, man. It says, get shell. So like it, yes, shall know that there has been a prophet among them. When all hell break loose, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, y'all gonna come to the conclusion that those men that was out there on the highways and byways in the ancient garments with the border blue, with the fringes, those were the men of the Lord. That's what you're gonna consider, man. Okay? But but that's that's like crazy. You're gonna wait till all hell break loose, and then you're gonna consider that those were the men of the Lord? Bugged out, man. Bugged out. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Bugged the hell out, man. It's going to be on you in that day, man. The scriptures told us to go out there and warn them. Get the blood off our hands. But we know Jake ain't going to take heed because the Lord just said they ain't going to take heed. So let's get this. Why? Because they despise the word. This is Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus said the Lord, 
Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, who the ignorant call God and Jesus Christ, right? Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, ask for the old ways of our ancient forefathers, which we are those people coming right back, man, okay? You're supposed to ask for the old paths, our high holy days, you know what I'm saying? What the Lord require, requires us to do, all those things, right? It says, and ask for the old paths, what type of food we used to eat, you know what I'm saying? How we used to pray, who we used to pray to, how we used to treat our neighbor, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, those are our neighbors, how we used to treat each other. You're supposed to go back to the old path. You're supposed to search out the ways of our forefathers, man. As the scripture have said, right? It says, where is the good way? Following the laws, that's the commandments of the Bible. That's the good way, right? That's what our people are supposed to be asking. What pleases you have by Shem Yahweh right? Look, and walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, the majority, the two-thirds of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, but they said, we will not walk therein. They said they ain't trying to take heed to the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scripture. They said they ain't trying to worry about how we used to be. You know what I'm saying? The old past. Two-thirds don't give a damn about the old past, man. They don't care nothing about the law, statutes, commandments of the Bible. They don't care nothing about pleasing the God of the Bible. None of that, man. But it's a penalty for that, right? Verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 17. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying... And, and in that day, you're going to admit who the true watchman of your house by Shem Yahushua was in that day when all hell break loose, man. But it's going to be too late. It's a such thing called too late, man. And y'all going to meet it. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we were not hawking. Okay? But we were not hawking. That's what two-thirds of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians said. Why? Because they're too busy partying. They're too busy murphing it up. They're too busy being comfortable here in America, man. When the scriptures tell you it's not our rest, I'm going to jump down to verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 19. Here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. And the word evil means bad times, man. Okay? The God of the Bible is going to bring bad times, the famine, the race riots, cannibalism, you know what I'm saying? death and destruction, the concentration camp. You name it, man, okay? The Gurga troops pulling you up out of your house, man. Your family members getting killed right in front of you. That's part of the evil time that the God of the Bible is going to bring upon the majority of our people, man. And you ain't going to like it, man. And you ain't going to like it, man, okay? Once again, here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened. They didn't take heed, right? And so my words, which were spoken by the prophets of the Lord, the God of the Bible speaks through his men. Hosea, what is it? Hosea um, 12 and 10, Amos 3 and 7. Read it for yourself, man. Many other scriptures, man. What did it say again? Because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it, man. Two-thirds of the Nick Rose, Latinos, and Native Americans, they reject the words of the Bible, man. So look, so you're going to be held accountable. You're going to be held accountable, man. When all these things come to pass, and you will not be able to say you wasn't warned, man. That's one thing you will not be able to come out your mouth and say. Let's get this, though. This is um, 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verse 20. For there be many that perish in this life. It's a whole lot of people getting ready to die, man. Hands down. A whole lot of people getting ready to die. Hands down, man. Okay? They're going to get caught up in them race riots. They're going to get caught up in more fires. They're going to get caught up in them earthquakes. It's going to be shaking buildings and making buildings fall down. Jake, y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know. Once again, 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 20. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of the Most High that is set before them. So you're wondering why the majority of the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are going to die? Because they despise, they hate the words of the Bible, man. You know, they hate the law of the Bible. Because they congregation leaders, the leader of the congregation are teaching our people that the laws are done away with. So he's most definitely going to die. A horrible death. He's most definitely going to die. A horrible death, man. It says, um, verse 21, For the Most High have given straight commandment to such as came, what they should do to live 
Obey the word and you're going to live. Matter of fact, hold on, let me get some. I'm going to come right back. I'm going to come right back. Because the Most High gave us straight commandments on what we need to do to live, right? Let's get this right quick. I'm going to come right back. This is Amos. This is Amos chapter 5, verse 4. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me. And ye shall live. So the only thing our people need to do is seek the God of the Bible, man. And you got a chance of living, man. But it's our people doing that. No, they'd rather seek Buddha, Allah, Santa Maria. You know what I'm saying? The Hindu God of Shiva, Molech, Baphomet. You know what I'm saying? Seeking vain glory, all that nonsense. Ain't nobody trying to repent. That's why these videos that we do only for the elect of the nation of Israel. Two-thirds ain't trying to repent, man. The God of the Bible says, seek ye me and ye shall live. But it's our people doing that. You, 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 know, you got like two to three people out there standing out there on the corner with us listening, trying to soak up this information while you still have time. Because guess what? A famine of the word is coming, man. And that's when you people going to really feel it, man. When the men of the Lord are not out there on the highways and byways anymore, that's when you Israelites are really going to feel it, man. Okay? So going right back, 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 21. For the most I have given straight commandment to such as came. What they should do to live, seek the God of the Bible. That's one way that you can live, man. Turn from your wicked way. Going right back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. You know, if my people should humble themselves. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that right quick and I'm going to come right back. Hold your horses. I'm going to come right back. The Lord gave us no saying what we need to do to live. And if you don't come back to the God of the Bible, you're gonna just know you're going to die, man. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, the Hebrew Israelites, Yasha Allah, princes of the power, which consists of these so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, that's the my people that it's talking about. It ain't talking about the whole world. The word my is possessive, man. So why would you even think that it's talking about the whole world? It's not, man. If my people, which are called by my name, Yasha Allah, princes of the power, shall humble themselves, this, this is how you get a chance to live again. You got to first humble yourself, right? And pray. We got to pray more. And seek my face. Seek the face of your high by Shemiah Rashad through these words, man. And the man is teaching it, man. Okay? It says, and turn from their wicked way. You got to turn, you Negroes, Latinos, the Native American, you got to turn from your wicked way, man. Committing adultery, meaning you know that a woman got a man. Leave that woman alone, man. Okay? Celebrate Christmas. I had to tell my daughter, you know what I'm saying, not too long ago. You know what I'm saying? And I tell her this every year, man. They don't celebrate these customs, man. And she still texts me, man. Happy this, happy that. How many times? Because they ain't taking heed, man. Okay? They ain't taking heed, man. The guy of the Bible said, turn from your wicked ways. Stop celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, your birthday, eating pork, shrimp, crab, lobsters. I said committing adultery already, selling drugs, game banging, using drugs. Being a witch and a warlock, turn from all that wickedness, man. Being a lesbian, you know what I'm saying? You women need to turn from that. That's your wicked ways right there, man. It says, oh yeah, lying, breaking down the scriptures the wrong way. The God of the Bible said, turn from all that wickedness, right? Robbing, stealing, breaking up into your neighbor's house. When the Bible condemns all that, right? Turn from your wicked ways, right? Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. And will heal their land. So you want to live? You got to do what the scriptures tell you to do. You want to live? So going right back. 2nd Ezra chapter 7. Verse. Um, I read the whole thing of 21 again. For the most I have given straight commandment. To such as came. What they should do to live. Even as they came. And what they should observe. To avoid punishment. And we just read what we need to do to avoid punishment. Seek the God of the Bible, turn from our wickedness, humble down, pray. It says, um, look, nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things, and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds, and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways, but his law have they despised. The laws of the Bible, our people hate it. When they tell our people, when the scriptures tell our people they can't eat pork, do you know they, they have a hissy fit, man? They go to stump around the house, man, stump a hole in the floor, man. Just because the guy of the Bible said you can't eat pork, man, okay? 
The Lord said you can't mess with the next man's woman. Here go Jake. Jake go to crying, having a fit. She bad though, dog. She bad though. That bad girl gonna get you killed though. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that woman belongs to a man already. Can, can you not get that up here? But they despise the law of the Bible, the scripture just said. And deny his covenant. See, the God of the Bible, we made an agreement, you know what I'm saying, with by Shema Rasha to keep these laws, statutes, commandments, man. Okay? In front of Moses, man. Okay? But two thirds, like, yo, the hell with that, right? It's a punishment for that. It says, um, and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his work. So two-thirds hate the words of the Bible. We still give them warning, man, that all of these things are going to come to pass, man. Death and destruction is coming. That's exactly what's coming. What was I thinking about? Yeah. Yeah, they despise the words of the Bible. We, look, we're giving you warning. Come back. This is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. Our people take it as a light thing when they um, despise the words of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? They take it as it ain't nothing really going to happen to them. You know? They look at it as a light thing for despising the laws, the commandments of the Bible, man. You know? That's, that's something deadly serious right there, man. What did the scripture say again? Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13. Whoso despises the word is talking to you Israelites, man. Okay? Because the word was given unto y'all, man. Okay? We prove all things. So I got to most definitely prove that right quick. This is Psalm chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his commandments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as far and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you the Lord. And that's just one scripture. I'm gonna get another one. That's just one scripture right there proving that the laws, the commandments of the Bible was only given to the Israelites and no one else. Let's get this other one. Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 46. These are the statutes and commandments. So like it. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ, made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses, man. So when it says, when it says right here, back in Proverbs, the 13th chapter, verse 13, that whoso despises the word, it's talking about Israel. Because we was the only ones that was given the word, right? So once again, whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, plain. Black and white. You take heed to the words of the Bible, you get to live. You despise, you, a.k.a. you hate the words of the Bible, you get destroyed. Plain. Plain. But he that feareth the commandment, shall be rewarded, man. And and fear is the beginning of knowledge, man. The fear of the God of the Bible is the beginning of knowledge. And let's get this right quick. This is my last one. Then I'm going to wrap it up. Yeah, I sound like a broken record. Okay. Okay. What we'll sound like a broken record? See if we sound like a broken record when death and destruction hit America and throughout the four corners of the earth. See if, you, look, you're going to want to hear that broken record in that day. You're going to wish you would have took heed to that broken record in that day. 2 Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 13. That whosoever, the same whosoever that we read about, you know what I'm saying, in Proverbs 13, chapter, the Israelites, okay? Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, and the confusion of faces, which are Israelites, man, okay? They just look like the other nations, man. Hello, that, that's not hard to get, man. Once again, 2 Chronicles, chapter 15, verse 13. That whosoever would not seek the Lord, power of Israel... Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai should be put to death. Should be put to death. Should be put to death. Whether small or great. Whether man or woman. Okay? Whether small or great. Whether man or woman, man. There's no respect to person, man. There's no respect to person. Let's see if I want to bring anything else out, man. Yeah, I bring this out right quick. I finish it off with this. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring a sword upon the land, you know a sword is any killing instrument. 
You know, the so-called white man, he's the sword. He's known as the sword. That that modern day gun, that's known as the sword. The different calamities is coming here to America and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, but mainly into America. That's known as the sword. Any killing instrument is known as the sword, right? Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring a sword, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. That's what we're doing. We sounding the alarm. We blowing the trumpet. Warning you, Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, man. <coughs> right? We warning you, right? That's what the watchmen do, right? It says, um, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, look, and take if not warning, if the sword comes and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. His blood shall be upon his own head. He didn't take heed to the warning. He heard the sound. Of, the guy the Bible said, he heard the sound of the trumpet. You know what I'm saying? The Israelites heard, is hearing the sound of the trumpet, but ain't nobody taking heed. But the watchman is straight up still blowing that trumpet, right? That's a heavy scripture, man. Heavy scripture. It says, um, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Okay? But the ones of our people that take heed to the sound of the trumpet, he's going to be delivered, man. Okay? And that's talking about the elect of the nation of Israel. You know? And I mean, and I, I, mean I, I can read on. I'm going to read one more verse. Verse 6. But if the watchmen see the sword coming... And blow not the trumpet. We we watching the news. You know what I'm saying? We're looking up current events. We're watching RT News, BBC, all that. You know what I'm saying? We see gentrification coming. But we don't go out there and warn our people. We know about the pending destruction that's going to befall America, man. You know what I'm saying? And what's coming to the earth. And But you don't go out there and warn the people? This, this is deadly serious, man. A watchman is supposed to warn the people, right? Because if you don't, what the scriptures say? But if the watchman see the sword come... The watchman seeing death and destruction coming, right? And blow not the trumpet. He don't make these videos. He don't go out there on the highways and byways and warn the people, right? It says, um, and the people be not warned if the sword come and take any person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hands, Okay? So we don't warn our people, their blood is going to be on our hands. And we can't, we, we just can't have that, man. We just can't have that through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Shai, right? You know? It says, So thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. And that's what the watchmen do. Give you warning from the God of the Bible, man. And the ones of our people that don't take heed to the warning, it's on you now. It's on you now, man, okay? And Lord willing, brothers will edify, you know what I'm saying, by the lesson that I just did through the Spirit of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Hey, take heed to the one. Our only job is to warn you Israelites not to play around with you, man, not to two-step with you, or none of that nonsense, man. Hey, hey, with that, man, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekah Kodash, we give all praise and honor and glory to the Heavenly Father and His Son, who you eagerly call God and Jesus Christ, right? Double honor to the head of apostles and elders of great millstone, the ones that taught me the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akins, man. All you watchmen out there that's warning, keep warning, man. Keep warning, keep warning, keep warning. Shalom.